Well, hello there, boys and girls. Look at this sweet, sweet fisheye lens on the camera. Let's talk about cellular transport now that you understand a little bit more about how the membrane works. Specifically, we're going to talk about molecules moving across that delicious fluid mosaic. Let's see how much I hate smart boards today. Not very much. That's very good. The first thing that you need to understand, boys and girls, is that these molecules move on their own. There is nothing uh, that the cell can do really to stop them or speed them up. We're talking about passive transport today. The cell membrane takes a passive role in this type of transport. However, only certain molecules may go through the phospholipid bilayer. Those molecules are going to be the little ones, the little ones. But because only some molecules can move through, we call this a selectively permeable membrane. And like I just said, it's based on size. So the smaller the molecule is, the more able it is to move through the membrane. Some examples of some very small molecules that can move right through the membrane are actually not water, not water. However, gases, iodine, uh, little molecules like that are able to move through. The reason why water cannot move through, even though it is very small, is because water is polar, and so it, it gets stopped. It gets stopped. It's got to be small, and it also has to be nonpolar. Only small nonpolar molecules may move through. We used to think that water could. We're going to talk about that a little bit anyway, but uh, yeah, not really so much a thing. Like I just said, most polar molecules cannot cross like water, and the movement is based on what we call the concentration gradient. I guess as you can see on the screen behind me here, you've got a higher concentration of these gray particles over here, and a lower concentration of them over here, which is what makes the screen white. So what will happen is these molecules tend to move because they're just randomly bumping into each other over here. They're going to tend to move from the area of high concentration and randomly spread to the area of lower concentration. Like a dot. This movement will result in equilibrium where now the molecules are evenly spread everywhere. Now the molecules are still moving. They're still, right, only absolute zero is when molecules are not moving. They're still bumping into each other. But because there's an even dispersal, there's an equal concentration everywhere. We say that there is equilibrium because now there's equal movement. It's equally likely that a molecule from this side will move over to this side as it is a molecule moving from this side over to that side. So the color of the particles, of the molecules, will be pretty continuous, giving us an equal concentration everywhere. So equilibrium, again, is when the concentration of molecules are equal on both sides. We call it equilibrium because it's actually equal movement, equal movement for equilibrium. The movement continues, however, there's no net movement. Here's another picture showing you, again, high concentration here, low concentration of the blue molecules over here. So yeah, as you can see, they're going to move from the area of high concentration to the area of low concentration until it's evenly blue everywhere. That's the premise of how passive transport works. Here's a nice animation showing that happening across a membrane. As you can see, you've got the total movement in the middle. This will go a few times, but you'll see you've got a flow more molecules are more likely to move here than they are to move from that side to that side. Again, the random movement that's Brownian motion is just because the molecules are bumping into each other, they're moving. But because we started more here, they're more likely to come here, and they continue on until there's no more net flow. See it right? Yeah. There. Well, close enough. Even concentration on both sides. They don't necessarily are in the same exact space, but you've got the same amount of molecules here and the same amount of molecules over there. Let's throw some terms at your face. Diffusion is one of the terms we need to know. That is the movement of molecules across a membrane based on their concentration gradient. That's moving from high concentration to low concentration, like all the pictures and animations I just showed you. Dialysis is specifically when we're talking about the diffusion of solids. We used to think that there was this thing called osmosis, which was the diffusion of water. And unfortunately, it's still in your standards, so you still need to know that at one point, we incorrectly thought that water could move via osmosis 
by simple diffusion. We know now that that is not the case, but when you see questions about osmosis, you will still need to be like, oh yeah, we have to pretend that the diffusion of water is a thing. Don't worry, I've already written my senator and the curriculum people at the state, they're working on it. Hopefully all that makes sense. We're gonna talk about how this affects the cells in class next day. Thanks for watching and watching me hate all the technology. Yay.